Hey guys, Level Cap here, and welcome to devlog number 32 for a spaceship game that I'm building in Unreal Engine 5 with my buddy Rich and a small team built from community members. Today, I'm excited to show off the baby steps for our layered material system. I think this is going to be the way that all games are done over the next five to ten years, which is layering materials on top of each other in really efficient ways that are all modifiable within the game. We've also made some modeling progress, making uh, loot steps dashes for the game, more spaceships, weapon concepting, and we even have some new concept artists on board. I've got a little bit more demo music to play you guys today and a bunch of other cool stuff. Let's get into it. Okay, so here's one of our starter ships. This would be an early game hauling ship that has a little bit of defensive capabilities. We're using this ship right now to prototype our work in progress layered material system. So what is a layered material system? Well, it's kind of what it sounds like. Layers of different materials that you can use for different areas of a ship. The difference here being that instead of using different material IDs on a mesh and applying an entirely different shader to different parts of the ship, eating up more draw calls and potentially a lot more texture sampling and all that kind of stuff, Basically, we bake it all into a single layered material, reducing draw calls and simplifying the amount of textures and memory and hard drive space that the game needs. We can add as many layers as we want to this system, and we actually mask it out with only two different materials that uh, handle ambient occlusion and a whole bunch of edgeware stuff, plus the different mask areas, masked regions for this material. Shout out to John Lagostini, who's been developing this system for us. It should give us all kinds of controls in the engine from changing the colors of ships in game if we wanted to, to making variants of ships to having special damage layers applied on top of our materials plus a bunch of decal stuff going on there's a bit more work to do with it but uh, i'm really excited about getting this workflow nailed down now when it comes to our asset pipeline we have a new concept artist on board and working with us this is kruger who i've been following on twitter art station what have you for quite a while I really like his style. He's got this kind of brutalist approach to spaceship design. He's been working with us for a little while now, and one of the first concepts I threw at him was a loot stash and a ammo stash. These are gonna function kind of like treasure chests in our game. If you're exploring an asteroid field or a map and you come across one of these, you'll be able to dock with it and it'll have a cargo bay and you can loot it, take whatever's in there. It'll be your chest, your crate that you might find in a survival game. This one here is a smuggler stash. We will have smugglers in the game and this is where they might keep some of their wares that they're waiting to move or trade with somebody at some point. If you come across these, you could potentially loot them for some valuable goods. This one here is an ammo depot. You might find more munitions, ship fuel, maybe even some weapons on here that belong to maybe mercenaries or pirates, but you come across it, you can kind of restock basically. We're also starting to concept out some defense platforms. These would be stationary platforms that have missiles, weapons, their own defense systems. They could be outside of space stations guarding them. They could be in hidden asteroid fields guarding a loot stash, a pirate base, uh, all kinds of uses for these things. But just kind of blocking out the ideas for them. And these will be fun to get in the game because they can be thrown into just about any situation and become a major deterrent. Now, I've also been spending some time blocking out our base weapon sizes and at least the basic design. These would be size one weapons interchangeable on spaceships. So you could have Sea Whiz, which would be for shooting down incoming missiles and also dealing damage to enemy ships, kind of a hybrid weapon. Then we have lasers, which would be primarily for shooting down incoming missiles with minimal ship-to-ship -ship damage. 
Uh, and then we have recoilless cannons that would be primarily for ship-to-ship -ship combat. Uh, the idea for these was actually suggested by a community member who recommended uh, the recoilless cannon that shoots a shell that projects enough exhaust out the back to create a zero recoil situation, which makes a lot of sense for space combat. So it kind of becomes our cannons for the game. Then we've been blocking out the size two weapons, which will be kind of medium range, medium sized ship combat. Uh, they will dominate in close quarters compared to some of the size three weapons, though. At least they'll be more capable of hitting faster moving ships. And then size three turrets are what you're going to see on battleships and bigger craft. They're going to be intended for dealing a lot of damage to either long range targets or big, slow moving targets in close range. Smaller ships should be able to evade a lot of these weapons if they're clever about it, but battleships will also have plenty of close quarter weapons to deal with them as well. Now this here is a little bit of a sneak peek on our spaceship sizing guide. We've got size one through seven ships from a small patrol craft all the way up to a dreadnought. Um, this is the ship that I was just showing off in the game, which would be a size one. We got a size one pirate there, kind of, these are all rough blockouts. Um, Island did most of these when he was doing his concept work. And the ships get slightly bigger and bigger as we go up the cargo line into size twos. Um, actually, I really like these ones, and I'm excited to get those modeled out in the game. Then we've got our bigger size three cargo ships, which um, I like these ones a lot too. They also are big enough to warrant not only a nice array of engines, but some retro rockets as well, which will be really cool to fire off when you're slowing down coming into port. Um, and then we just see some of the ships that I've modeled out as we get bigger and bigger on our way all the way up to battleships and then dreadnoughts and we're actually concepting out a battleship right now, which I'm very excited about modeling. Now we also got some music ramping up in the background. This is a new piece from Peter, our composer, and I think it is awesome. This is for exploration. So we've been busy this week, mostly nailing down asset pipeline stuff. Uh, it's really important to get this workflow right, both for speed, efficiency, performance, long-term edibility, so we can come back and change things later as needed. Uh, I'm excited about it. Rich is coming back next week, and hopefully we can talk about some of the quest system stuff he's been working on in our next devlog. I hope you guys enjoyed this devlog. If you wanna follow along with the project more closely, check out our Discord in the video description. And if you wanna check out other devlogs, they're right here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.